So that's um, a pretty hot topic in South Korea. It's kind of controversial, so I won't go into that really. But um, the guy that I met, he was just kind of like sitting on the, uh, the side of the road when we found him. Um, he didn't know Korean. He couldn't read or write um, when he got there a year ago. So he was learning that slowly. Korean is based on, um, I guess you could say, Chinese characters. And he, and that's kind of a common thing for Koreans know to like, if you say a word that they don't know, like a gospel word they don't know, you can use like the Chinese to tell them what it means and they'll get it um, typically. And he didn't even like, um, for example, God Shin is just kind of like the generic word for God there. So like Buddhist gods, our God, kind of whatever. And he didn't know what that meant even. And he didn't even kind of get the whole idea of a God. So that was really new to me because he didn't even, he didn't know what our God meant, first of all, but he didn't know the idea of a creator. So that was super interesting. Um, and I wouldn't generalize that, but he was from North Korea and he had no concept of a God. That was interesting. He was really slow going, easy going because a lot of it is farming, I guess, up in North Korea. There's not as much, like, obviously the economy's not as robust as South Korea, and so it's hard for them a lot of the time to come to South Korea and just kind of jump into the work life. Um, so that was really hard for him. He was kind of an older guy, and South Korean life just kind of really passed him by, and he didn't have a whole lot of interest in, you know, technology, in the TV shows, in dramas, that kind of thing. He was just really happy that nobody was telling him what to do and he wasn't afraid of dying. So um, that was really interesting. He just had a really different perspective on life. There was no view of God from him, but there was also no, like, worldly, you know, like, screen in front of his eyes kind of thing. Now, this guy, he walked with a limp and he had like a crutch kind of thing and we asked him what happened. And he said he was, while well, he was a boy in North Korea, they were playing with an unexploded ordinance, like a, like a grenade or a bomb shell kind of thing. And he threw it and it blew up and shrapnel got in his leg. So he had trouble walking the rest of his life. That was kind of weird. I didn't realize that there, he, yeah. It was just kind of weird for me that, like, as a kid, they were just, like, tossing around bombshells and it blew up and hurt him, so. I remember there were North Korean, um, like, food places. I don't remember if we went to any of them, but I do remember hearing that they were, like, really different. It was just kind of, yeah. As small as Korea is, there's incredible diversity in the food, the language, the culture. Yeah, even, like, in America, you get married in a church, you, like, involve God in the marriage. Um, like a traditional thing for them is to go to like this huge statue of Kim, Kim Il-sung, their like first North Korean leader, and to bow to that and like pay homage to him. So that was like really interesting to learn. I didn't know that while I was in Korea, but um, came back, took a class on North Korea, and that was, yeah. So it's just like God is completely out of the, um, their life, and their leader kind of fills that void. So it's really interesting. Even titles ascribed to him become, like, dedicated to him. You can't use them for anybody else. Like, we, you know, the president, for example, the word president applies to any of our presidents. Um, their first leader has a certain title, and then that, like, title was retired when he died. And so the next guy got a different title, was a little bit bigger. Um, he would say things, and that would get attributed to him, and then it was, like, his words, and then when he died, that was retired. The next one got another set of things and like, yeah, so it's really interesting.